By now you've heard about April 8th and the complete solar eclipse that's gonna go, that's gonna be in the United States of America or it's gonna be in the heavens, but we're gonna see it here. And it's been several years since we've seen such a solar eclipse and some of us, especially those of us in New York are gonna be fortunate if we're in the right place at the right time to see a total eclipse. But the real question is, does this mean anything for us as believers, as a planet? Is God trying to say something? Maybe you've seen part one, part two, well, here's part three. Some other strange things that are about to happen on April 8th and what God may be saying to us because I'm a firm believer that when God says he's putting signs in the heavens and he gave us the sun and the moon and the bodies of the heavens as signs, seasons, and times, he wasn't kidding. And so regardless about what you think it means, I can tell you this, if there is a solar eclipse, if the sun and the moon and the earth are lining up just right to make something happen, no man did that. God is doing that himself. And so it really makes sense for us to be as the sons of Issachar and the Bereans and study the word and get the real meaning or at least try to find out what God is saying. Hi, my name is Pastor Sharo. This is Preacher Girl TV and this is part three of the April 8th 2024 solar eclipse podcast all right so we already talked about some of the strange things that are happening in part one part two and those will be linked right here so you can go check those out i don't want to go back through that but i want to tell you what happened to me last week as i was driving to work so i'm passing on what is called in new york the southern state highway okay it's a freeway a major freeway linking my town in long island to queens where my church is and there's this public um, information LED sign on one of the overpasses. You guys probably have that in your town. And that's where you see things like adult driver missing and they give you the license plate or they tell you there was um, use mass transit because there's a wreck somewhere or they tell you traffic accident ahead. So they, they use those signs to put public information up. The well, last week, I'm driving to work and this is what the sign says. It says, solar eclipse, April 8th, use mass transit. So I took a picture of it and then I, I was like, why? Because I'm telling you, we here in New York, we've lived through Hurricane Sandy, all kinds of natural disasters. 9-11 happened here and those signs, especially one like a hurricane, which we knew of in advance, they didn't give us that information till the day before. Those signs are never used to, to do things to tell us, okay, there's a solar eclipse. My question was, so what? If it's no big deal, why do I have to use mass transit? Are people gonna forget how to drive because there's a solar eclipse? To me, that was weird. That was kind of like out of the blue. Maybe it means nothing to you, but since then, that sign's been taken down, but I saw it and I was with my niece, she saw it. It said, solar eclipse, April 8th, use mass transit. Almost like you're warning me two weeks in advance to buy a bus ticket or to buy a, a train ticket because there's gonna, it makes zero sense. So it was, an, it was really um, strange to me. It wasn't alarming, but I'm thinking to myself, if, there, if there's going to be a blackout, right? If the sun and the moon is going to do their thing and it's going to be dark in New York, do I want to be stuck underground in a, in a train? But yet, here are these signs telling us that's what we should do. Use mass transit. I'm just giving you that as food for thought because sometimes we see these things on TV or we hear these things on, on YouTube or whatever and we think, oh, that's no big deal. But maybe we miss those things that are right in front of our eyes. Now, these podcasts are not to scare you. They're not to make you feel like if it's the end of the world and you're going to die and you're, all your family are going to go to hell. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying that as Christians and as women of God, we should really take the time to see signs to recognize them and say, Lord, if you are speaking, what are you saying? To go back in the Bible and find references and find things that were written there that we see how God works and what he's saying and what he could be saying and really not be caught like, a, like those who are not expecting a thief in the night. I've heard a lot of people say um, on YouTube that no man can tell when Jesus is going to come because he's coming as a thief in the night. It's true that no one knows the day or the hour. That's a fact. But the reference to a thief in the night is for those who do not look for the appearing of Jesus Christ. 
If you are not expecting the rapture at any day, if you believe that Jesus is not really going to eventually come back for his church, then he will surprise you and it will be as a thief in the night. But for those of us who know that he can come today, he does not come as a thief in the night. We expect his appearing. So there are five things that I didn't mention in the first two podcasts that I want to tell you about. Just submit it for your consideration. So just so you know what to look for on April 8th and really discern for your own self, pray about what does this mean for us as a church, as a people, and as Preacher Girl TV. So the first one was that sign I told you about. Uh, that was a bonus. I really thought that's super weird. And why isn't it there now? It was there a week ago, two weeks before the eclipse, but now just half a week before it's gone. That sign is no longer there. I don't know if someone who works for the government put it there and then it was taken down. I look for it every morning and it's not there anymore. Isn't that strange? The second thing, um, since the last podcast, something else has come to our attention, to my attention anyway, that NASA is sending up some rockets into the shadow of the solar eclipse. And if you don't know this yet, you might not be following this but you can go to nasa.gov and look at this and and nasa is sending up three probes three rockets into the shadow of the solar eclipse on april 8th so there's already an april 8th eclipse going to happen we already know it we already know about where it's crossing how it's you know when how significant the timing is all of those things but this is the part that really shook me nasa had to name this venture and name these rockets and they're sending up these three rockets and it has one name and it's called the serpent deity now for those of you who don't think that's a big deal serpent is just another word for snake and deity is another word for god and every single civilization on earth everyone ever from the beginning till now has some form of serpent worship or we recognize satan as demonic right so ancient civilizations mesopotamia hindu hinduism jainism all the old religions every one has some sort of serpent in its divinity story so we know ours in the garden of eden satan took on the body of the serpent in order to cause the fall of man. And we know in the book of Revelation that the Bible says that that serpent, Satan, the devil, he is a serpent. He was cursed to crawl on his belly. Now NASA has to come up with a name for their rockets and they name it after the Egyptian god of darkness. And that's the serpent deity. And I think really that's preposterous. I mean, I'm like, is that on purpose of all the things that that nasa could name I, i think that's crazy you know what i also think is a little bit worrying for me or at least just just curious is the fact that the hebrew word for Na, um the hebrew meaning of nasa from the verb nasa is the verb to be deceived or the deceived isn't that curious anyway That's not me saying NASA is a deceiver, but that's me saying I don't think it's in. I, I really am confused as to why that was the name that was chosen. Um, the explanation that I found is that they say it is a war between the sun and the moon and the sun god in Egypt was Ra and the serpent deity was his nemesis. So, I, and I'm thinking, okay, so your rockets are what the nemesis of the sun or it just does not make the explanation to me is not a valid one but that is the name so think about that while the earth and the sun and the moon is in eclipse while the sun is in eclipse nasa is going to send up some rockets called the serpent deity into the heavens into the skies that would be bad enough but also happening on april 8th for your cosmic enjoyment <laughs> there's a comet yep You guys heard about this if you listened to my um, teaching last week, uh, last week at Hope NYC. I talked to you about that particular Pons Comet 12. It's it's called, get this, the name, affectionate name of this comet is the Devil Comet. All right. Um, and this is not said tongue in cheek. This is not something to, to prod Christians. This is really what it was named the last time, 71 years ago, when it passed by. And even now, as scientists are able to see it in the, in the um, 
in our galaxy right now, they call it the devil comet. Here, why? Because this comet, the way most comets have one tail, this has two tails, which looks, those tails look like horns. So it, ha you know, it has that look of the devil's head. And um, so, get this cosmic catastrophe, this, this cosmic thing that's gonna be happening on April 8th. There's a solar eclipse, there's a serpent deity shot up by NASA into the air, and there's the devil comet, all happening in the stratosphere at the same time for your viewing enjoyment. Now, that would be enough to at least cause you to be curious, to at least cause you to get outside and get some solar eclipse glasses and watch the event and try to figure out what is going on and what's happening, but that's not all. We're all we all know CERN. I've done podcasts on CERN. I've taught, you know, done Bible studies on different things. But if you don't, CERN is um, that organization that has a massive, massive hadron collider, hadron collider underneath the ground. Right? They've built this thing, and what they do with this big old machine is that they they throw particles of protons together at atomic speed. This particular piece of machinery um, was it's huge you have to have a map to see the size of it it's built underground and it was made in order to um, throw um, atoms together at such force to create things like black holes and to see where energy is formed and to to do things like create sparks of life and and just to observe these things and it sounds so scientifically amazing doesn't it it really does um, sound like a creative thing, but so many people have said and know that this is a dangerous piece of equipment, that it has the potential not only to destroy human life on a great basis, but because scientists do not know the repercussions and they do not know what these kinds of atomic speeds and things moving so fast. So the Hadron Collider is is it's massive and it's actually seven different colliders. They're accelerators, they're decelerators, and all they do is manipulate particles at speeds which are not regularly or humanly possible. If you know anything about centrifugal forces and the way that particles move, this is atomic speed. It is, you will lose yourself. You will just disintegrate into a million billion particles if it, you were to come into contact with things at that kind of speed. So what these these accelerators do is um, throw these particles together and it creates some sort of energy in a vacuum. Now, it, it sounds so, like I said, creative and amazing, but any scientist in the world who knows who has followed this, I encourage you to go read up about it. The, the dangers and the things that they're trying to do here are not normal scientific experiments. They're beyond that. And um, not only that, the Hadron Collider is so dangerous that it was shut down. It's been shut down for several years now, but it's about to start back up. Whoopee. And guess when? You guessed it. April 8th, ahead of schedule, is the day that they've decided to start this Hadron Collider again. And for some reason, it is the optimal day for restarting a massive machine a system of machines under the ground in Switzerland covering acres and acres of land that has the potential to create a black hole vacuum in the earth that scientists do not even know what to do with or how to do it, at least not any undis not any disclosed knowledge. When you do look up CERN, it's spelled C-E-R-N, just do me a favor and go see the, the statue that's in front of CERN. Just start your research there. And especially if you are of East Indian heritage or you know anything about the religion of Hinduism, go look at that and then tell me that that is not a godly organization. Then we'll talk about it. But yeah, it's a very curious thing that that's the day. Now, I recently heard, and this is even, we have enough stuff on April 8th to be curious and concerned, but I heard today that there's one more special announcement that was just made on April 8th, which is, they're saying it's a ballpark, but that's in the center. That's the middle of the date of possibility. There is going to be a resurgence of cicadas, also known as locusts, that have been dormant for 13 years. These particular insects have been asleep in the ground 
for 13 years. And in spring of 2024, April 8th, they're going to wake up by the billions. This sounds like a fairy tale. This does not sound like truth. And the fact that all of these, these are not normal signs. These are biblical signs. These are signs of biblical proportions. I mean, is anybody right now recalling Egypt? Is anybody recalling Moses with the locusts, with the darkness? I mean, with the serpent, when he dropped that that stick and it swallowed the... I mean, is anybody seeing any kinds of correlations with with what's happening now with the pestilence and the plagues? Well, it's happening. I mean, I'm not saying that that's what this is, but I, 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 the fact that all of it is culminating on that one day, if nothing else, it should raise up a spiritual awareness in every single one of us that when we get to heaven and, and we say, God, I was so shocked. And he, he would say to us, but how could you be shocked? How could you when I have sent every possible sign that you could see to know that God was saying, get ready, be warned. This is not an ordinary day. It would be enough. I mean, literally, I've already given you five, but here's one more. Most of you know that April 8th begins the leap month. So unlike the Gregorian calendar, which gives us an extra day in February, in the Hebrew calendar, you get a whole extra month, a leap month in a leap year. And that month, which is mentioned over and over in the book of Esther, starts with our eclipse day. Isn't that a mind-blowing thing? Also, the Muslim calendar and the day of Eid is the day right after that eclipse. There's too much. I can't even, if I were to try to give you all of the things that are going to be happening on that particular day. And you might say, Pastor Shara, that's coincidence. Well, just pick a random day. What about June 13th? Is anything happening on that day? No. There's no solar eclipse. No locusts are coming out. CERN ain't doing nothing. I'm just saying, it's not a coincidence that all of the things collide, even the Hadron Collider. All of it collides. It's cosmic. The Hadron Collider, for instance, is the most cosmic piece of apparatus that exists on the planet. There's nothing else like it in the world, not even in Dubai, nowhere. That, for all of this to be happening on the same day, the way this is happening, to me, it's a sign really that the church, us, we need to wake up because God's giving us a small window. God's given us an opening. And he's saying in this season, if people don't believe in God now, they never will. With all of the signs that they see, if they harden their hearts now, they'll not believe. Because what else do they need to see? The, the son of man himself, when he comes, it'll be too late to want to believe. And do you know when Jesus Christ comes back after the tribulation, people still won't believe. They'll try to shoot him down from the sky. And so this is part three. I encourage you to do your own research. This podcast was never meant to scare you. I would never do that. I'm excited. I would definitely not want you to be scared. You might be like, well, why are you excited? <laughs> I'm excited because when I see the Bible, just happening before my eyes. It's my dream come true to see these things that one day will be written, the Bible says, we'll be able to read about these things and we will see that the hand of God was in it, all of it, all at the same time. And we, just like the people in biblical times, for the most part, were ignorant of it. And we did not believe. Like Noah, who had to build a boat for a hundred years, nobody believed him. Sometimes I feel a little teeny tiny bit like he felt, but it's okay. It's okay because we keep preaching the message till the day the rain falls, right? Anyway, I love you so much and I thank you for being a part of the Preacher Girl podcast. I know this one wasn't long, but this is the kind of one that you have to go read for yourself. You have to do your own research. And maybe if you have time and you can block out the cuss words, you can go watch a movie called leave the world behind where there's something I want to just tell you I saw in that movie this is not me plugging the movie this is me telling you it's super sus that that movie is so close to what's happening in the United States of America 
and what the media has already warned us is a potential problem that we're gonna have, right? Which is that our grid, our electricity, our ability to drive our cars and and live in our houses and have power and all of that, it's possible that we could have a cyber attack and those things could be shut down. But in the movie, there's this line that I thought was so, it hit me, I wrote it down because I felt, even as I watched it, that somebody was giving us a message, that somebody was in their own conscience trying to justify telling America, we told you so. And this is what they said. They said, when people want to destroy America, this is how they're gonna do it. The first thing is isolation. They're gonna teach people that they have to be alone, every man alone. And that's what we went through during COVID. We have a whole generation of young people who have no skills and, and communication skills because they, they know how to be isolated, right? Quarantine is not a strange word to any child. We know. So the first thing they'll do to a nation they want to destroy is isolate people. The second thing, they call it synchronized chaos. And they said, when you have synchronized chaos, nobody knows who the real enemy is. So people start turning in on each other. So it's going to be the transgenders against the straight, straight people and the blacks against the whites and the whites against the blacks and the legals against the migrants and the, and the Republicans and the, against the Democrats. And it's going to be every faction. Think about it. Religion against religion and Jews against, against Muslims and Muslims against Jews and, and, and red versus blue and everybody's fighting and nobody is sure who the real enemy is. It's a strategy. It's called synchronized chaos. And then they said step three is civil war. That's how you destroy a nation, they said. And if we've heard those words over and over, if we've heard it, that you don't have to bring war to a nation if you can cause a nation to go at war with itself. It will implode from the inside out. So if nothing else, this podcast is, is just a petition to tell you to open up your eyes, to realize that your real enemy is not your neighbor. It's never going to be another person. It's always going to be a diabolical plan of the enemy to destroy because the Bible says Satan came for that, to kill, to steal, and to destroy. But Christ came that we might have life and have it more abundantly. Preacher Girls, I hope you enjoy the podcast. I know I, I ended like five minutes ago and I'm still talking, but I love you so much. It's such an exciting time to be alive. It's such an exciting time to know Jesus. If you have any questions, comments, if you think this is ridiculous, write it in the comments. I'd love to see it anyway. Don't you ever forget, you obviously don't need a pulpit. You just need a message because if God called you, no one can uncall you. I love you so much. <laughs>